cells and immune cells. And when the neuronal cells that, that are under attack from the apoptosis that is, uh, that is naturally supposed to occur, occur on our, in our bodies, um, when they're involuntary motor neurons, the respiratory and cardiovascular systems fail. They hey, Joe, breathe. Joe, I'm going to let you finish that up on the other side of the break. We're going to break right now. But you sound very educated. You need to start making some YouTube videos. We'll be back with more. It's the Alex Jones Show. This is going to be the, the next big question for all these presidential candidates, how they feel about mandatory vaccines. It's time to get back in their face. They're trying to bully us into medical tyranny. I wanted to um, take issue with you anti-vaxxers, right-wingers, rednecks. It's about Big Brother, uh, but on the other hand, some things do require some involvement of Big Brother. What gives you the right to tell me that I should get a shot, that my children should be shot? I don't think there's anything extraordinary about resorting to freedom. Hillary Clinton took to Twitter to voice her support for vaccinations. The science is clear. The earth is round, the sky is blue, and vaccines work. Let's protect all our kids. I can't swallow and I spot on my toe. And I just want to tell anybody out there, if you get a shot, you're a fool. Meanwhile, the insert says it can make you get measles. Understand that? We have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents or kids belong to their families and recognize that kids belong to whole communities. But I think the parents should have some input. The state doesn't okay. own your children. Parents own the children, and it is an issue of freedom. But the 10% can't go to school unless they get vaccinated. The science of vaccines, which work effectively 100% of the time, and the white oh, race... Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry, you haven't read the CDC memo, have you? It was 99% last week. Now they're telling people it's 97%. So it's not 100% even by their own statistics. Meanwhile, the outbreak was caused by vaccinated people! Resistance to tyrants is obedience to God. It's Alex Jones. And what you saw Alex Jones doing right there, getting loud, getting in people's faces, that's what we need to do. But we also need to be respectful of that. And I'm going to show you the right way to do it later on in the show. We're going to go back to your calls here in a second as well. Um, and I'm also going to show you how they're lying to you about this DTaP vaccine, which our caller Joseph was just talking about. His sister got it and has cerebral palsy, autism. Uh, there's one other uh, one other condition that she is suffering. And I mean, that's and now they want to give it to pregnant women. So I'm going to tell you how they lie to you about that. But first, one thing to do, you can do to protect your health is the use of colloidal silver. That's one thing I use personally on a regular basis. If I'm starting, if I'm getting a sore throat, I feel bad, gargle a little bit of colloidal silver and swallow it. Uh, I like to also swish it around in my mouth after flossing and brushing. Uh, to me, that's and that's my daily use of it. And um, I'll take two or three dropperfuls, swish it around, maybe put a little water in it. And, you know, it makes my mouth, if, you've, if you have really bad breath, you should try this just to see how your mouth feels after you do it. You'll be amazed at the bacteria living in your mouth that is immediately uh, washed away by using silver bullets. You can get it at InfoWarsLife.com. Um, I would recommend having three or four of these in your house at any one time because you never know when you're going to need it. I, I, also, if people are out there, um, you can make your own colloidal silver too by getting a colloidal silver generator. And that's another way to have a, a uh, higher dose version. Uh, you can make it in, in, you know, in fact, you should do your own research on this and see what kind of parts per million you agree with. This is 30 parts per million. I make it at 10 parts per million, but to each his own, um, because the medical paradigm out there isn't really interested in helping you. They're interested in profits. Now, here I want to go to this Daily Mail article, and then we're going to get back to Joseph. Pregnant women urged to have whooping cough vaccine after cases of disease rose 24% in one year. So pregnant women are being urged to have whooping cough vaccine after figures show an increase in the number of cases. Experts believe women, uh, women are put off having injections during pregnancy as they fear they might have negative side effects on their unborn children. But, uh, of course, officials are saying we can provide reassurance that the whooping cough vaccine is safe to use for use during pregnancy with no known adverse side effects for the mother or baby. Let me say it right there. Right under uh, the picture with the guy with the needle. You can read that where they, they just say it right there. It's, it's totally okay. We've got, but now let's look at three inserts of three whooping cough vaccines. It's also called pertussis for those of you out there that don't know it. We're going to look at the Inferix. This is, and this is an insert that I just went online and found. So there's Inferix. You can see acellular pertussis. That's one of the vaccines in there. It's diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis all in one. Yay. Uh, section 8, pregnancy. So let's go to Section 8. 
Let's go see what they say in Section 8 here. Um, in use in specific populations, pregnancy, animal reproduction studies have not been conducted with infrix. It is also not known whether infrix can cause fetal harm when administered to a pregnant woman or can affect reproduction capacity. Well, they just say it right there. And then pediatric use, safety and effectiveness of infrix in infants younger than six weeks of age and children seven to 16 years of age have not been established. Infrex is not approved for use in these age groups, yet they want you to give it to pregnant women. And they haven't even tested it, and they admit it in the insert. That's why I say hashtag read the damn insert. Let's look at the next one. This is from uh, Dap Daptacil. This is from, uh, I think this is from Pasture. The other one was from GlaxoSmithKline. So they also have a Section 8 on pregnancy. And you can do this. Just type in vaccine inserts, and you can go pick out which ones you want to look at. It's very easy to do. This is a little smaller. But same thing, pregnancy category C. Animal reproduction studies have not been conducted with DTAPSIL vaccine. It is also not known whether Daptacil vaccine can cause fetal harm when administered to a pregnant woman or affect reproductive capacity. It is not approved for infants below six years of age and children seven years of age or older. They just admit it right there. All right. And here's an actual vaccine insert. And this is, uh, I think this is, has seven different vaccines and it's called Pentacil. And once again, you open it up. Pregnancy, animal reproduction studies have not been conducted with the Pentacil vaccine. It is not known whether Pentacil vaccine can cause harm when administered to a pregnant woman or affect reproduction capacity. Pentacil vaccine is not approved for use of women of childbearing age. So they don't even want women of childbearing age to take this vaccine, yet they're pushing it in this article from Daily Mail. So, Joseph, I want to go back to you. What do you think of that? They're still pushing it on pregnant women, yet... There's studies saying that they've never even tested it. That's in the insert. What do you think of that, Joseph? I've done some extensive research into toxemia and preeclampsia. And preeclampsia is, is when the fetus now is becoming uh, toxic. And the mother and the fetus both know that there is an issue when the blood is toxic and the, the, because the child, the fetus's kidneys and liver are not developed. Right. So the mother is responsible for the cleaning of the blood, correct? So and when the mother gets vaccinated, now the mother's blood has become toxic. The toxic blood goes to the fetus. The fetus is under attack now. So the, the mother knows that there's an issue now with toxic blood going to the fetus. So there are so many preemies because of this, because the mother will shed the child in order to save it from further exposure of toxins from her own blood. Mm-hmm. But the preeclampsia and the toxemia, uh, they kill so many children because of the blood is so uh, tainted with so many toxins that are metallic neurotoxins that the, there's no way that a brand new baby's kidneys and liver can start to function right away. And then they put the hep B in right, right, right. away. The second day, they so, want to give them so the hep B. Yeah. Right, right away. So they want to add insult to injury right on the kidneys and liver, bang, right away. And then on top of that, when they do a... Uh, early clamping, when they clamp off the umbilical cord too soon, mm -hmm. imagine this. The, the, the lungs now are full of uh, amniotic fluid, right, in, in the, in the, when they're in the womb. So they're not, they're not breathing. They have no oxygen saturation in their lungs. So they clamp off the umbilical cord. The child's not even developed oxygen in the lungs yet. So now the brain is starved from oxygen because you've just cut off the blood flow from the mother to the, inf the, to the, to the fetus, the infant's brain. And you're spanking the child, trying to get it to breathe. And so it's, it takes a little bit before the oxygen will actually saturate in the lungs and get into the blood. So now you've just starved the, the brain for oxygen that way also, on top of the blood being coated with toxins that don't allow the transfer of oxygen anyways. So preeclampsia yeah. and toxemia right now kill so much. But And I, I want to get out, uh, hopefully before I, I lose you, that... I started this research when my sister first got injured, and people tried to deny me back then. And I, I, I hate losing an argument if I don't have enough facts. So mm -hmm. that is why I research all the way to the molecular level. Right. So that when somebody rebuts back to me something that doesn't make any sense, I'll explain it to them molecularly. Well, you sound but, very educated so on this, Joseph. And I want to get you as a guest on the Nightly News next week. So you can really flesh this out maybe for three or four segments. I mean, we'll give you like 30 minutes where you can just lay your research out that you've done as a lay person, because I want people to know that they can also do this type of research and find out this information. And they're not, uh, they don't have to just listen to the authority figures. 
to where they get their health information. Could I, could I tell my show that I actually started for the case of, of uh, being an alertist, an alarmist to try to inform people? Sure, we started plug your show. show. Go called, ahead. Yeah. Where does your show we, air? We started a show called, our show is uh, it's on the net. It's on Cave Radio uh, Broadcasting.com. It's C A V E Radio Broadcasting.com. The name of our show is Freedom Works. Freedom and then Works is W O R X. But Freedom Works on Cave Radio Broadcasting, we do it every Sunday from 2 to 5. We talk about vaccine injuries and the vaccine protocol and how allopathic medicine is nothing but legalized eugenics. And we explain, uh, you know, all of what we, we know. And yeah. then we're also open for input from anybody else that may have a correction if we're not going the right way. Sure. Because I'm an electrician by trade. Right, right. I'm not a doctor. And that's how this is. You know, we all have to do our own research because it's our responsibility to look out for our kids it's not the doctor's responsibility it's not the healthcare industry's responsibility their responsibility is to make money for their shareholders that's what their responsibility is so they don't have any responsibility to the actual health of our children they may tell you that in ads but as we just played that one ad that darren mcbreen voiced that's not what happens they, they don't really care about the health of your kid joe we're going to run but we're going to be talking to you very soon z in florida what is your vaccine story um, I, uh, I have three uh, grandchildren that was uh, um, uh, given those shots, and and uh, uh, before they were given the shots, they were kind of like happy and playful, and uh, now they just kind of like sit around. But uh, they're they're different ages. One is fourteen, one is uh, ten, and the other one is five. And uh, so, uh, but but I'd, I'd like to share with you um, uh, something that might be helpful to everyone concerned about that, because um, two or three days, maybe before the child gets ready to take those shots, if you would start giving them activated charcoal, uh, uh, activated charcoal, and the minute that thing hit their bodies, it will be drawn straight out through the charcoal. And uh, that was something for everyone who uh, is afraid uh, to stand up to the government or, you know, those that uh, are uh, have this uh, law going on, which is not a law. We know it's not a law because I read it myself where, and I sent it to my son-in-law, but he just, chose to ignore it and have all the children vaccinated. So that was not a very good choice for him to make. But I just want to share with uh, others, if I had known when he was going to take them to, to get shots or anything like that, I would have had uh, slurry, uh, charcoal and water, have him drink it down several couple of days, maybe before. And when they when they take that shot, it would draw it straight out of their bodies without... Yeah. Uh, appreciate that, Z. Appreciate that bit of information. That you know, it's amazing. Activated charcoal, baking soda, hydrogen peroxide are all things that are very inexpensive to buy that also have amazing health benefits. And I encourage you to do the research on that. Thank you very much for that story, Z. I'm sorry that your uh, grandkids had to go through the full vaccination schedule. Doesn't sound pleasant. Sylvia in California, uh, what is your vaccine story? Okay, um, back in the '60s, as you know, the vaccines weren't near as bad as what they have now. And uh, I had to have some vaccines for school, plus we were going to go overseas to Europe to visit my mom's relatives. And the doctor gave us these shots. And the next day, I was um, standing on this brick, like, bench around a tree, and I was, everything in the world was spinning, and I passed out. My mother's reaction, she ended up in the hospital. So we had an Asian doctor. He tested us, and he said we're allergic to the preservatives used in vaccines and advised us not to have any vaccines, especially flu vaccines. So all these years, I haven't had to have any vaccines. When the um, swine flu came out in 76, we just sweat it. We just um, got under a bunch of blankets and did stuff to try and sweat the, the virus, whatever it was, out of us, you know? Mm -hmm. And we was only sick three days. But now I'm scared because they're passing all these laws in California wanting to force people to have vaccines. And, you know, there's all kinds of situations. What if you have to go to the hospital? Yeah. What if um, what if there's just some situation where you have to be in a place where there's groups of people and they want to require you to have shots there? Um, what if I, a few years ago I was uh, arrested on a stake in identity? I looked like somebody that robbed a, 
gas station and they had me there for two days and then they took